Okay, so for any Halloween bumper, there's one main component that's going to dominate everything else, and that is, of course, blood. Now, believe it or not, I did a little bit of research, and I found out that the RGB value of blood is 132 red, 0 blue, and 0 green. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our blood splatter element that's going to be in the background that's going to happen on the wall right now, and that blood color is obviously going to be a very important part of that. Okay, so let me show you how this is going to work. What we're going to do is we're going to take our blood splatter element. Now one thing that's important to keep in mind about this element is that it is very large. And what I want to do here is I just want to show you that with the transparent background this element is actually black. But the most important part of this element is not the color of it but it's the alpha of it. So I'm going to just leave this as transparent for right now so you can see what's happening. So let's put in a color solid because we're going to do a little bit of masking to get this blood splatter to be the color that we want it to be. So I'm going to come to the library and I'm in my generators right now and you can see that I have color solid selected so let's take this color solid and just drag it into our group and we're going to want it to be the same size as our blood splatter. You can see that the blood splatter is huge inside the frame. Now the easiest way to figure out what the size of this element is is just to simply jump into the media tab and we can just scroll over here and there's the dimensions right there 2000 by 560. So we're going to come back to our layers tab we'll just select our color solid and we're going to come to the inspector and we know that it's 2000 by 560. Now we're going to want to make this that blood red color. Now I know that in motion with our sliders the RGB value is actually going to work out to be 0.58 and that's going to be 0 and the blue value is going to be 0. So that is a good blood color. Now we're going to do something that's actually a very simple technique that confuses a lot of people. and We're going to do a simple image mask to our color solid to get our blood splatter to appear. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our color solid and you can see right down here I have something that says add image mask. So I'm going to add an image mask. Now the first thing that motion wants to know is what is the mask element that you want to use. So I'm going to simply take my blood splatter and I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to drop it into the mask source. And there we go. Done. Now our blood spatter is red the way that it should be. What's important to keep in mind is that what is visible right now is the color solid, not the blood spatter. As you can see, it's turned off altogether. Now the other thing that always confuses people as well is the source channel. Now remember I showed you and I told you that the most important part of this element was the alpha. Because the element was black, we didn't want it to be black, but it was completely keyable. So what we're doing is we're using the alpha information to cut out our color solid to get our blood spatter to go across the screen. So I'm just going to move our color across here. And what I want to do is I want to have our blood spatter stay for the entire length of our composition. So I'm just going to come back to the inspector and come back to properties and come down to timing. And our end condition is simply going to be hold. Okay, so let's take this and we'll just drag this element all the way down to the end just like such and then our element will be good to the end of our composition. Okay, so we have our blood spatter, but the only thing is that once it spatters on the wall, then we're going to have some dripping happening. So we're going to create that right now, and then we're going to have this whole element happen on our wall.